Hey guys, this is Keith here. This is part two in my video series, which now looks like going to a part three because I don't quite get the lights working in this video. But I want to pick up from where I left off last time. Last time, for those that have watched the video, we'd used a logic analyzer, we'd captured the signal, we'd removed the power because these lights work differently to most of our pixel lights that we use in the Christmas lighting hobby where the data and the power are mixed together on the same wires. And so we'd worked out a way to separate the data signal and capture that data signal. And we'd made some immediate observations around that initial data signal and proposed a circuit for trying to reproduce that, that power, combined power and data signal to try and drive the light. So if you haven't seen that video, I strongly suggest you go back and watch that video first because you'll get a better appreciation for exactly what we're trying to achieve and how we got up to this point. So in this video, I have got some input from some viewers on uh, my previous video, and there's a couple of things that they've, they've steered me towards and suggestions they've made, and we'll talk about those. I have managed to take the signal and turn it into an actual data stream so we can start to look at what's actually in that signal. Uh, I have then also tried to reproduce the signal, so independently of the Twinkly hardware. And then I tried to take that signal, feed it through our, our circuit that takes the power and the signal and see whether we can drive the lights. And obviously, I didn't get that far at that point, and so that's why there'll be a third video. So... The first thing, Paolo sent me a bunch of messages and uh, sent me towards these QED3110 pixels, which he'd actually ordered a, a set of from China and suggested that the pixels in the twinkly lights were likely these pixels. And that actually does seem pretty likely. The data sheet that uh, was actually originally all in Chinese and he managed to use an app which uh, uh, which scanned the Chinese and tried to convert it into English, or at least an attempt at English. It doesn't tell you a great deal about the, the LEDs at all. Uh, it definitely doesn't give you the data signal, but it does tell us that the, the, the LEDs actually end up getting programmed with an address in the factory as part of assembly. So unlike regular LEDs or regular um, pixels where you can cut, and, cut them out and stick them into other strings or regular LEDs where you can chain them all together and get them to light up, because these LEDs have got an address burned into them, you can only replace an LED in a string with a LED from another string that was taken from exactly the same place inside the string, which, which does make them kind of interesting. The way that seems to work is it looks like they they connect all the four um, uh, legs up independently. They apply voltage to two of them. They program them with the other two. And then once the LED is being programmed, which is a one-time activity, they then join together pins one and two, and they join to pins together one, three, and four. And then they package them up and put them into the final strings. And I don't believe you can reprogram them once you've done that. I could find absolutely no documentation at all on the protocol at all. The only hint that I got in here is obviously, given that the, the pixels are addressed, it means there must be something in the data that is addressing the pixels. And as you will see as we get into the data, that does appear to be the case. So that was the first hint that I got. The second uh, hint that I got from Dave was he suggested that uh, some changes to the circuit. So previously I had Q4 in this circuit where I was switching both the, the 10.2 signal as well as the, the 24 volt signal using Q3 and Q4. And what Dave said to me was he said, look, you know, given that you're switching the 24 volt signal and given you've got the diode to stop the 24 volt signal flowing back up to the 10.8 the rail, then you don't really need that additional uh, FET. And you can actually have the 10.8 held steady and then just switch it up to 24 volts. And as you can see, using my one kilohertz test signal, 
this actually does produce a really nice result. I, I don't get the same spikes that I used to get. This is with and without the capacitor, but it is pretty nice. It doesn't quite get to the 24 volt. I, I had to pump it up to about 27 volts to get an actual 24 volt output signal. But other than that, this does a pretty good job. But as you'll see later in the video, we're going to make a few more changes to this circuit as well based on some of the experiments that I ran. So thanks, Dave. So I showed uh, fragments of the signal last time that I'd captured with the lo uh, logic analyzer. But one of the, the powerful things that the Soleil logic application has is the ability to write a decoder. And they actually publish a whole bunch of samples of these decoders for their built-in ones. And so what I went through was I went and grabbed their DMX uh, decoder and I started to make some code changes and came up with a QED3110 decoder that, as you can see here, seems to be capturing. Now, this is all based on my theory that this, this long pause here is the frame start. The ones are, are the 5.25 highs followed by the, the 5.25 lows, whereas the zeros are the 5.25 high followed by the 3.25 low. And the end frame or the end word, sorry, is the 2.25 high followed by the 10.25 low. Now, I, I don't know how sensitive the pixels are. I definitely found that when I captured all of the data, there was definitely some corruption in the data. I don't know if that was a problem in my Soleil capture due to the circuit that I was using to extract the signal or whether it was bugs in the analyzer. But this was good enough to start to see what the data signal was looking like. And as you can see down here in the right hand side, you can see that there's actually a set of data here that you can clean up and start to look at the, the data that's going out. So this looks pretty good and I was pretty happy with where I got to at this point. So the next thing I needed to do was to take that data and start to break it down and see some patterns. And so now you can see what happens when I took that data from the bottom right hand side here and cut paste it into Notepad++ and I started to get rid of the frame markers and the word markers. And I, you know, Right up front here, I'm picking one of the cleaner parts of the data. There are definitely other parts of the data uh, that, that are there that aren't that clean. And towards the back end of the video, I will give you a Bitbucket address where you can go and download the actual Soleil capture. Uh, and you can then download from the Soleil site the Logic app if you'd like to open that up and take a look at it. And you can also download uh, the plugin that I created to analyze it so you can play with this and look at this if you're really interested in doing so. But what I've done here is I've broken it down and basically put each word onto its own line. As you can see, the first word always seems to be a bit short and I don't really know why that is, but it did confuse me the last time when I was looking at the signal. It always came up as 33 bytes, but then 33 bits and then all the subsequent words seem to be 34 bits. If you look at the data in its entirety, there's also 35 bits and the like. So mm, there may be something else going on there. Based on this particular sample, I then looked at this and I, I, I looking at this, I think that the, the one one seems pretty consistently to be the start of a word. There then seems to be an eight bit pixel address with the least significant bit first. So this would obviously be the zero bit. Uh, interestingly, it then jumps to three. I don't know what happened to one and two. I, uh, maybe there's a reason, maybe it didn't issue it, I don't know. But this looks like three, this looks like five, this looks like seven, this looks like uh, nine. So maybe it's not outputting every pixel, but you, you definitely get a sense that this definitely is the pixel address. And then this is not a good capture here because these are all zeros. But as you look through the data, it does appear that there's uh, two sets of eight bytes, although I think I've broken it at seven and nine, but this should be two, three sets of eight bits, which represent the, the pixel data, or at least that's my hypothesis. But it does look that way. 
So the next step was to try and reproduce that signal and to do that I grabbed a Raspberry Pi Pico and wrote a bunch of code. This code just outputs three pixels, it just sets them to I think red, but I'm going to play with it a little bit further and actually start to generate a test pattern. Actually, is it red or white? No, it seems to be white. Uh, so it's setting it to white. Uh, you can see here that it only outputs once every 50 milliseconds and you can see here I'm watching this back through that QED analyzer so it does seem to be producing a signal at least that my QED analyzer can read and understand so it does look like I'm generating a pretty good signal out of the Pico which is pretty good. So I was pretty happy with that. This is obviously a good basis for me to, to further develop it and build some test patterns, etc., and test it all out once, once at least I've got something lighting up. Uh, again, the source code for this will be in my Bitbucket if you'd like to go and play with it or have a look at it in greater detail. So then how does it look like when we put our driving circuit? So I hooked our driving circuit up. I, I here in the yellow, you can see the input signal that's coming from the Raspberry Pi Pico. I have stepped it up to five volts to make sure that it is driving the circuit correctly. But as you can see, I get absolutely nothing useful on the output. And the capacitor, this is with the capacitor. And when I take the capacitor away, you can see there are these little ticks which do seem to somehow correspond with the data, but I'm not getting a nice square wave. I'm not getting it jumping up and down to 24 volts. So there's definitely something wrong in the circuit here. So then I went and probed after Q1. And so for Q1, if you remember, Q1, if I come back, Q1 here, it is after it does the inversion. So I'm probing up here to see what the signal looks like here. And what you see down here is that the signal is actually quite degraded already after a single MOSFET. And so by the time it gets all the way through the circuit, it's just not strong enough to even drive the MOSFETs anymore at this speed. So when I was running it at the slow one kilohertz using the test signal out of my uh, oscilloscope it was all well and good but now that I'm running with a much faster signal generated by the Pico I'm not getting a useful data signal so this is obviously not going to drive my pixels. So the first thing that I did was change R1 and R2 from 10k down to 1k. So if we go back to our circuit here this is these two uh, resistors here that grab the, the 10.8 volts and, and drive this one and grab the 24 volts to drive this one. So essentially what we're doing is driving the transistors a bit harder uh, to try and sharpen up the rise time on the switching of these two MOSFETs. When we do that, at least initially, we got a much, much uh, better signal uh, but with the capacitor there, the output still wasn't right. I was still receiving. So this was the, the output of that Q1, which was looking much, much better. But the output at the end of the circuit was now pretty much sitting up at 24 volts all the time. Now, when I took the capacitor away, I did get a signal on the output that looked much, much better. But I'm getting a lot of overshoot here. And so I, I did want to clean that up uh, a lot if I could, and I did that by throwing a 330 picofarad capacitor. So basically this was a much larger capacitor. I think it was like 100 nanofarads. I reduced that down to 330 picofarads and it, it got rid of some of the spikes at the low end and it definitely drove it over a reasonable uh, voltage range. Hopefully it's driving it low enough to actually drive the lights, but, I, but it, it's good enough to start a test if nothing else. So, did it work? Well, I already hinted. No, nope, it didn't. The lights did not respond at all, which uh, is unfortunate. And it just means that I, I probably have a few things that I need to clean up further in this circuit. Possible reasons why it might be failing. It, it is possible that this circuit 
is not getting quite low enough. It, it seems to drop to, if this is the 10 volt line, it, it's closer to 13 or 14 volts rather than 10.2 volts. Maybe it's not dropping fast enough. That's possible. Also with the rounding going on here, maybe the, the, the time here is not long enough. Uh, maybe I actually need to, to slightly extend the signal so I get a better uh, uh, total time here. What I think I might do is actually, having set this all up and driving it, I might actually recapture it using my other circuit and try to tune it so that when I capture it again, I also get the same result because I, I suspect I'm not quite getting that right now. So there's definitely some work I need to do. It, it, it's possible that there are other things that I could do to do a better job of driving this circuit. I, I did, well, I, I, maybe I need to change this uh, resistor down here. I've changed all of the others. Maybe if I change this resistor here, it will uh, fall a little bit faster and I'll get a better low out of this rather than, than this. I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm a little worried about how much power it's gonna sink uh, via that path versus the LEDs. I don't know. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, please feel free to contribute them. But look, I, I think I've made a reasonable amount of progress uh, through this video. I just, I just don't have it working yet. So what's next? I definitely need to get the lights to do something. It doesn't really matter whether they, they respond exactly the way I think they should. I just need to get them to do something because once I get them to do something, uh, then I can start to work out exactly how to fine tune the protocol. I may not have got it quite right. Maybe maybe it's not always once, I don't know. Anyway, so things, that, like I said, the voltages may not be right and I might need to play with that. The capacitance on the output also may not be right. I might need to play with that. Uh, maybe my signal timing is not close enough on the output. I've been measuring it on the output from the Pico, which is obviously right on the money. But by the time all of that rounding occurs on the signal and it gets to the final output, maybe that timing is now not good enough and not close enough to the actual timing that's required by the pixels and I need to clean that up. So I'm gonna to have to do some more experimentation. So if you'd like to see the source code and everything else, you can find all of that in that Bitbucket address, which appears at the bottom of the page there. If I bring the Bitbucket up here, you can see that there is uh, the QE3, QED3310 analyzer. So if you wanna download the Soleil Logic application, you can use this plugin to analyze the signal. In the capture folder, I've included a capture of the signal, so you can then load it up and start to look at it and explore it if you would like to. In the documentation folder, I've included some documentation that I managed to find on the QED 3110s, uh, mostly in Chinese, but there, there's a few things there. The schematics holds the schematics in KiCad format for those circuits that I've been showing you. And then the Twinkly folder holds the, uh, the Pi Pico application for generating the signal. So if you like to play along at home and build the circuits and, and try it out yourself, feel free to do so. If you have any suggestions on things that I might try or things that you think I've done wrong, please comment on the video below. And because uh, uh, some of the things I got last time were really helpful and I think definitely improved the circuit and put, put me in the right direction when it came to the pixels. So thanks guys and let's hope I can get to video three reasonably quickly once I, I manage to get some success with driving these pixels. Thanks.